Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. And welcome to the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of May. This month we have an exalted sun in our sky. It is lauded by a debilitated Mars. So that's quite an interesting energetic interplay that we've got going on this month. In your mini reports, I will be covering definitely the exalted sun. We'll take a look as well at Mercury going forward. We'll have a little dip in with Venus there, see what good news she's bringing. And we'll also look at the eclipse in detail as well. We have got a big, powerful eclipse at the start of May. So I'm going to be talking more about that and what that means for everyone. I don't have as much of a news matchup this time. What I will do is I'll timestamp everything below so you can just click into the bits that you would like to see. But I wanted to cover off a couple of quick VLC housekeeping type things at the start and then we're going to take a look at the energy for May. So the thing I wanted to bring up was uh, to do with comments and emails. So in the comments below I just wanted to bring up um, one comment that I saw I think it was a couple of days ago and uh, a person had mentioned that I delete comments and I just wanted to say that no I never delete comments that's not something I do. Uh, I believe in freedom of speech I want people to have their say and you can say whatever you like in the comments below. I just ask that it be respectful to the community members. You can say anything you like about me or you know I, I don't get offended or any of that. Uh, I have a lot of understanding for people right now you know we've got Saturn in Aquarius, we've got tough energies in our world and we have come through I think three of the toughest years you know definitely I mean for me it's like that was three of the toughest years of my life and I'm sure for many people out there the last three years have been really really tough. So in the collective at the moment you know we do have a, a lot of interesting energies and yeah it has to go somewhere or be expressed or whatever so I want you to feel like you can express yourself fully in the comments below. I don't have filters or any of that on the comments. People can even post links so um, you know I, I saw recently somebody did post a link and that worked so I just wanted to definitely make the point that I don't delete comments. If you find that a comment has been deleted what it means is that the person who wrote it deleted it themselves. Okay that is for sure and a lot of people do that both on positive and negative comments and that I understand as well because sometimes you just want to get a message to me and it will come up on there's a little I think it's a bell icon or something I've got something on my dashboard thing and it comes up but then when I click on it and maybe I want to read it in full sometimes I click on it and the comment is gone so that means you yourself have deleted it but I've at least been able to read two or three lines so sometimes people just want to communicate something but then in order to maintain their privacy they will delete the comment whether it be negative or positive uh, I've seen people in both instances delete their own comment so that's fine because how I see it is that that's your creativity I don't want to silence you you know I've had the opportunity to have my say you should have the opportunity to have your say and you can be frank you can be open it's a place for friendly and respectful debate okay so that is one of the things I wanted to cover off there um, I also wanted to cover off the point that yeah I don't have filters on the comments you can put links but I recently got an email from one of you and I'll put the email on the screen but I'll blur out the name and, and things like that um, and this email by one of you stated that your comment got censored and I thought that was really interesting because one of the things I've loved about the comment section that we have going on this community is that a lot of you will drop the truth in okay because up here I can't say everything but down there you guys can speak okay so you can say and some of you who have been like for example based in Ukraine and things like that you've told us all what's going on from your direct point of view and that's one of the things I value about the comments so much I love that about our comment section so it was pretty amazing to hear that 
someone had said that their comment got censored. Um, I'll check that out. I haven't had time to check that out today because I was going to copy it and post it and see what's going on, why, why that wasn't able to be posted. It might be because it was really long, but this is a community member that I know. This is someone who I consider a friend. You know, we've done work together. I know his family, all that kind of thing. So this is someone I know. And he said, look, my comment didn't go online. Can you do something? So absolutely. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get that on a web page and I'll link it below. So you can link externally and you can read that. And it's got really interesting research and information about both the Dalai Lama and Elon Musk. So I'll also try to get that link on the Rahu Jupiter video as well, so that that content is represented there as well. The other thing I just wanted to say very quickly about email is that um, I do get a lot of emails and sometimes people write me an email and um, sometimes I'm actually not sure if it's a real person or not. I have had problems with people using fake accounts and uh, I've had various issues like that. I've even had, um, you know, to deal with administrative things, identity theft, other things like that. I've had, yeah, I've had a lot of Rahu Jupiter type things to deal with. So um, that has all been really interesting. So I just wanted to say that if you email me and I don't write back, please don't take it personally. It doesn't mean anything. It may mean that I'm not sure if you're coming in disguised or who are you or what are you or all this kind of thing. There are scam people, there are, you know, certain people. But generally I can identify when there's a business request or there's, you know, and especially when clients have very valid questions about the booking process or that, you know, they want to book, but there's something they want to ask. Uh, that I will usually um, write back to. There are some emails that I may not write back to. Sometimes people write things like, please, can you walk me through the booking system or something like that? I haven't got time to do that kind of thing. And, and if you need assistance with how to use a web page or things like that. I'm sure you might have a friend or a family member who can walk you through because it is very intuitive and um, I've spent a lot of time and it costs a lot of money actually to keep those uh, the acuity scheduler and all those things going. So it's, it's, it's well designed, it's very easy to use and um, that, that should be okay. So I think that covers all the housekeeping things guys and let's crack on the energy for May. So what do we have going on this month? Now for news matchup I don't have anything too much. I have this tiny little piece of news because I was just watching an episode by, um, I don't know if you've seen him, I mentioned, I think I mentioned Richard Vobes last time. I caught up with some of his content today and because of him I found this other channel. One of you had asked in the comments, please would you share your sources? So here's one of the sources I looked up. Today I just happened to be watching a video by a guy called Funky Prepper and I enjoy some of his content, I think it's quite cool. And he mentioned a ban a uh, southwest water hose pipe ban to be extended to parts of Devon. And he said that this ban would be in place. And this is what flagged for me from April to December. Now that is the entire time of Rahu Jupiter energy. Isn't that incredible? So I thought, oh, this is some kind of Rahu Jupiter thing. And look at this, the experts, right? The Jupiterians have put down this rule that, well, you know, you can't use your house pipe uh, your hose pipe, whatever. I, I don't know. In Australia, we just call it a hose. Uh, you can't use your hose to water your garden or wash your car because there's some form of drought. And I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, really? Surely it rains in Devon in, say, for example, like maybe they could make it from April to September. Surely it rains in October and November, right? So it's just really interesting that they seem to be running that through from April to December. Um, yeah, that, I thought that was quite Rahu Jupiter like, you know, that the the um, experts have gone a bit Rahu in that instance. Because the reason I question it is because I did grow up in Australia. I grew up with drought. I know what it's like when you're not allowed to use your hose and your garden gets crispy and the cars are really dirty. I know that scene because I've lived it. And yeah, I just I've lived here too for so many years, many, many years. And um, I'm not that far from, you know, Devon and, and I'm sure it's wet enough. I, I can't imagine that there's going to be a drought. 
So I thought that was pretty interesting. Maybe there is. I'm, I don't know. I'm not an expert on these things at all. But what I felt flagged about, the flag went off in my head. He said, April to December, that covers the entire Rahu Jupiter period. So I just thought that was, that was a little bit of Rahu Jupiter type news there. All right, but let's take a look at May. What do we have going on in May? So what I'm observing and feeling right now, we've had the first eclipse uh, earlier. That was, well, that wasn't long ago. That was what, April the 20th? Have I got that right? I'll put it on the screen. I'll look it up properly. But we've had the April eclipse. And I don't know about you, but I've been talking to quite a few people and there appears to be some form of stillness. Are we all feeling or sensing some kind of stillness in the world or there's a waiting? There's a feeling like we're waiting for something. We're waiting for something to happen. Nothing's happening. What's going on? It's still, it's slow, it's quiet. That is how I've been feeling things after that eclipse. And it feels like we're in this in-between place because we're in between these two major eclipse energies. And it does feel like quite a bit of a lull is what I've been observing. I've got the note here, nothing appears to be going forward just yet. And I do believe that we're waiting. What are we waiting for? I think we're waiting for that next eclipse, right? So the next eclipse is going to be on the 5th of May. Interestingly, it's the day before the king's coronation and it's really interesting to study royalty because when you look at the dates that royals choose, they do seem to align with the stars and it's really interesting when you look at um, this, again, I don't know too much about, but you know, people like I believe Rory Duff is one of them and I remember some of David Icke's older videos as well when he was still on YouTube. These guys will talk about energetic lines and you know in the build of the world like where they've put important parliamentary buildings, top banks, you know um, the city, all this kind of thing. These all have you know they're all very um, they, they figure it out energetically, where are the best places to put these things. And I do believe that when some of these top people like royalty, when they figure out their dates, I do think that they are working things out astrologically as well. You know, um, I've got here quite incredible to have such a major historical event linking into this full moon eclipse. So that's pretty amazing. The moon will be in Vishaka Nakshatra. This is symbolized by an archway. And one of the big concepts here to do with Vishaka Nakshatra is that we are crossing a threshold and we are emerging into a new world. So that is really the energy that we have present as part of this eclipse. And for each one of you in your mini reading today, I'm gonna to be looking at what new threshold are you about to walk into yourself? So, forward momentum when are we going to start feeling that you know okay we've got this stillness going on will we start feeling it after the eclipse yeah I, I think after the eclipse we will start to feel it but then we're really going to feel that forward momentum from the 15th of may onwards because we're going to have mercury moving forward and we're also going to have sun stepping into taurus and that's significant because the sun will be stepping outside the lordship of a debilitated Mars. Okay, so where the sun is, yes, the sun is exalted up until 15th of May. Again, very um, perfectly aligned with, you know, a king being coronated, right? Because the sun is the king. So that that's really stunning. Um, so we've got this exalted sun in the sky, but, but the, one of the things about this exalted sun is that Mars is debilitated, right, at the same time. So I've got here Mars, yeah, well Mars is debilitated from 10th May to 1st of July. So there's a portion of the exalted sun where the Lord is debilitated. Interestingly, that's not, the debilitation isn't there on the 5th or the 6th, um, but it is there 
from the 10th of May to the 1st of July. But when we have the sun stepping into Taurus, as I say, and outside the lordship of a debilitated Mars on 15th May, I do think that that is going to feel like forward momentum as well. I have the note here, Mars's debilitation may give a flat quality to energy throughout May. It, it's possible. I will look at the Mars energy, I think, separately in another video if I can do that next week. So we'll see how I go for time. I'm always pressed for time, but I always want to make videos. So know that my list is uh, really long. And we've also got Venus. Yes, well, when Venus comes closer to Mars and joins him in Cancer from June onwards, I think things will start to get a lot more hectic on the world scene. And yeah, that could be um, things kind of heating up and getting a bit more sort of interesting. We'll, we'll take a look at June when we get there, but uh, I'm just raising that ahead of time a little bit. So this time for the mini reports, what am I taking a look at? Well, for everyone, we're going to take a look at the exalted sun energy and we're going to we're really going to see the positivity of that. You know, you've got a glorious, beautiful, exalted sun somewhere in your life. We're going to see what, what's what's the good news there. Such a beautiful energy. Uh, we're also going to take a look at the forward momentum that you're going to experience from mid month onwards. So don't worry if it feels a little bit slow right now and don't worry if the first half of May is a bit slow you know we've, we've got some reasons as for why that is now full moon eclipse in Vishaka Nakshatra we're going to check that out for each one of you and the new moon in Taurus in Kritika Nakshatra as well I'm pretty sure that is on yeah that's the 19th of May so the full moon eclipse on the 5th of May and the new moon on the 19th of May we're going to have a look at that for everyone. So those of you who would like to join me, we go through the whole zodiac and look at absolutely everything. Just check the time, we're okay. I also wanted to say um, thank you to those of you who point out occasionally there are like, yeah, sometimes maybe I misquote the house or these kind of thing, little things do happen. But um, I do double check on the uh, the content and I, I check it with a transit wheel chart so I think largely these are all okay but I very much appreciate those of you who um, in the comments below if, if you point out hey this thing wasn't um, yeah I, I will try to correct that where I can the other thing I also wanted to mention about the comments uh, was thank you I should have said this earlier when uh, so any of you I hope that you're still here those of you who I'd like this to go out to but thank you to those of you who moderate in the comments um, that is just so gratefully received by me honestly thank you with all my heart those of you who are moderating the comments or you know you have nice conversations in the comments and yeah thank you I truly you are gold to me. There are a handful of you out there who, who just nominate to do that. Thank you. It really, really means a lot. So um, yeah. All right. Let's start from the beginning, shall we? Let's take a look at Aries. So Aries, welcome Aries. Now this is Aries moon, Aries ascendant, or even Aries sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So we have an exalted sun in Aries in your sign. Uh, the first half of the month in your first house. So there's this great natural leadership energy here that I'm seeing. Now sun transiting your first house can make a person feel a little bit more tired at times. Uh, and this is an exalted sun. This is a really powerful sun. So and you know your ascendant lord is debilitated. So if you're feeling that your energy is fluctuated or you're quite tired, you're unusually tired or but then sometimes you have a sudden burst of energy you know you've got some reasons here as to why now the sun lords your fifth house so a way to channel this beautiful exalted energy is just by being creative so it's a really great time for you to be creative that first half of the month now mid-month onwards we have mercury moving forward on the 15th of may this is where we're going to start to experience that forward momentum okay so if things have been quiet on the work front you know perhaps you're going to have some more clients come in or you're going to be busier or, or this kind of thing now mercury lords your third house where transiting venus 
will be there and she wants you to socialize she wants you to be with friends so if you're feeling inspired to call up a friend and invite them out then definitely do that now the sun will be in taurus in your second house so it's also a great time to spend time with family okay um, sometimes sun in the second can be you know again a little bit pressure uh, sometimes to do with eyesight headaches things like that that can happen but ultimately it's, it's there in the second house great to spend time with family now full moon eclipse 5th of may vishaka moon we have here so this is happening in your seventh house it's a libra vishaka moon seventh house so we have a new threshold of energy and for you this is in regards to relationships so if you're single this could be the end of being single okay um, if you're coupled up this could be the end of a dynamic that is perhaps um, limiting the love between the two of you you know this could be you, you're on the threshold of coming closer together something could heal between you something that previously triggered you maybe it just won't bother you anymore right these are some of the things to look out for so there is healing possible here and a possibility of exploring new levels of love as well we have a new moon this is an exalted moon on the 19th of may in taurus krithika nakshatra in your second house so when we have a new moon this is a great time to plant a seed for something that you'd love to have happen so plant a seed for growth in your personal stability and your finances as well thank you so much aries we are now going to welcome taurus taurus welcome thank you so much for joining so this is taurus ascendant taurus moon or taurus sun as per the sidereal vedic system of astrology so for the first half of the month we have a glorious exalted sun in aries in your 12th house now this is quite interesting you have got a lot of activity in your 12th house you might find it hard to sleep this uh, for this you know first part of may um, sun lords your fourth house so some property matter or domestic matter might also be highlighted at this time um, could also be something to do with your relationship with your mother or how you nurture yourself as well now mid-month onwards we have mercury going forward on the 15th of may and mercury lords your second house where transiting venus wants you to enjoy time at home and enjoy cooking up something delicious enjoy being with the family you know enjoy a bit of a bit of cozy time if possible uh, sun will be in taurus in your first house yeah so it's definitely a good time to rest whenever you can sun in the first house it can be for some people it can be energizing can be draining as well okay so it just depends on a, on a few different things there uh, full moon eclipse is going to be happening on the 5th of may and that's libra vishaka nakshatra moon happening in your sixth house so there's a new threshold that you have the possibility to move into at this time now the new threshold of energy for you is in your service to the world this could be an expansion in your work or what it is that you do how you serve others how you be of service to other people i've also got here something about you is being cleared to bring yes something about bringing spirituality to the earth plane something about bringing spirituality to the earth plane in a practical way we got cut there so i'm just going to reread that portion again something about you is being cleared or there's something in your way that's being cleared so that you can bring more spirituality to this earth plane in a practical way okay because we're here in your sixth house so there's something that can be cleared it's something it could be a blockage and it's something that's preventing you from bringing the great ideas and wisdom of your own higher self your own spiritual self to the earth plane it's exciting taurus it's really very exciting this energy 
because that will enable you to be more creative as well. There's a new moon, it's an exalted moon as well. Uh, 19th May in Taurus Krithika Nakshatra. It's happening in your first house. This is your new moon, Taurus. This is all about you. So in terms of planting seeds, what kind of a seed do you want to plant that you would like to have grow going forward? That is totally up to you. You decide because it can be as big as, you know, I want my whole life to change you know if that's if that's the big seed you want to plant you you can plant that at this time and a great way to plant any seed is if you can go into stillness just pure stillness pure meditation and feel the vibration of you having the thing that you really desire and that's a brilliant way of planting that seed and that energy and you leave it you let it go you don't look at it, you don't touch it, you trust that, that that seed is going to grow into a great big thing. So Taurus, I'm excited for this month for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Gemini Ascendant, Gemini Moon or Gemini Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So we have an exalted sun in Aries in the first half of the month, which for you will be in your 11th house. Oh, this is really superb because the sun lords your third house as well. Gemini, you have got one of the best sun situations in the zodiac at the moment. So uh, you have great financial opportunities to look forward to. Uh, you know, you can network with ease. You'll be able to present yourself beautifully. You're going to have terrific courage. This is just great energy, okay? And if it's not in your work sector, this will be something wonderful that's social, okay? Or maybe you'll just be getting along with your peers really well. This could also be siblings, great fun times with your siblings as well. So this is really, really nice energy here. There's some just beautiful energy here and, and fun to be had as well. This is wonderful. Now, mid-month onwards, we have Mercury moving forward on 15th May. Mercury lords your first house where transiting Venus is passing through and she wants you to enjoy exercise. She wants you to enjoy your health, enjoy your vitality. You know, it's a great time. We've got that forward momentum. So if you have dropped off from your exercise routine, it's perfectly fine it happens to everyone and yeah if you want to pick up an exercise routine again 15th May onwards is the perfect time to do it and you should have some great energy there to keep it going for quite a while and that's because you know life happens life just gets busy sometimes and then you drop off your uh, routine and that's perfectly natural now Sun in Taurus in your 12th house yeah so that's from 15th May onwards Yes, you're doing more exercise and that's actually very ideal if you can because when sun is in Taurus in your 12th house from 15th May onwards, you might be finding it hard to sleep. But if you up your exercise from 15th May onwards, sleeping shouldn't be a problem. So that is something to bear in mind there. Now there's a full moon eclipse happening on the 5th of May in Libra Vishaka Nakshatra that's in your 5th house. So you're going to be standing on a new threshold of energy, right? And this energy is within your creativity. It's all, it, it could also be your romantic life or in your relationship with your children. So, and if, that, if all three of those applies to you, wonderful. Okay, you've got all this new energy to look forward to in those domains in your life. So that's romantically, that's create, creatively, and your relationship with your children as well. And I've got the note here, on the other side of this threshold is this beautiful new energy. So there's something awaiting you, I do believe it's really, really good here. And this could be like, for example, if you are single, uh, Gemini, then you know maybe, maybe this is the end of being single, maybe this is the beginning of a new phase for you. Now, new moon. And that's an exalted moon. It's going to be happening on the 19th of May in Taurus, Kritika Nakshatra. This is happening in your 12th house. So this is a great time to wish for your spiritual gifts to be opened up. Uh, perhaps for your intuition to be increased. You know, um, 
and of course in such a way that what you're ready for you know because you don't want to um, and it's not up to us anyway when it's a true spiritual awakening that's just timed and it will happen as it's meant to and yeah so but you can wish for spiritual gifts to be opened up kind of at the right time that you're supported through all your transitions I've also got here you could also wish that your energy field gets a really good clearing at this new moon so that's 19th May because another thing when I was reading the research on Taurus and Krittika Nakshatra, it did mention about like a cleansing uh, with fire, which was pretty interesting. So you can wish for um, for something like that. And if you wanted to, I am I just had this idea come into my mind. I mean, you could do just a very brief few minutes of a, a meditation where you just visualize and this was something that was um, taught to me by a couple of different energy healers and I've seen some of these type meditations on the internet as well where you just have like a cooling um, violet flame just like go through your energy field and you visualize that and you visualize it's just clearing up your field so you could do that for a couple of minutes uh, on the 19th of May if you wanted like a, a visualization or a little something to do for that uh, you could do it in ahead of time, but f that you want it to be for that new moon as well. I, I do believe that's perfectly fine. Gemini, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Cancer Ascendant, Cancer Moon or Cancer Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So we have got an exalted sun in our sky in Aries in the first half of the month of May that's in your 10th house so this is really quite beautiful it's happening in the 10th house Sun loves to be in the 10th house the Sun shines so beautifully from there this is your time to shine at work this is your time to present your ideas you know don't be shy you'll be seen uh, you know at this time you'll be recognized and if you're not working, this could be a time where you pick up work as well. Now the sun lords your second house and I do believe at this time it is about work. It's about finances. It's about money. It is a bit, you know, yeah, you're, you're quite serious about um, being organized, being on top of things and, and making progress. Now mid-month onwards we have Mercury moving forward on the 15th of May. Mercury lords your 12th house where transiting Venus wants you to enjoy some well-earned escapism and fun. Okay so this is you know if you want to procrastinate and have fun and relax and you've been working hard that first half of the month you will be busy you will be working you will be quite serious you will be work focused but second half of the month onwards perfectly fine for you to um, you know escape have fun take take a bit of time to yourself sun in Taurus in your 11th house uh, this is also a great time to be social to pick up new work contacts to expand your network to expand your social media platforms if you if you run those now there's a full moon happening, a full moon eclipse happening on the 5th of May and this is in Libra, Vishaka Nakshatra in your fourth house. So you're standing on a new threshold, there's a new threshold of energy here and this is in your home life and at this time you might be inspired about where you really want to live because it might be quite different to where you currently live and there's a lot of this type of thing going on at the moment there's a lot of city dwellers people who are in cities and they just dream of being in the countryside and yes i do relate to this i too have been inspired you know looking at oh what what else is out there it can't just be this you know so you, you this is a time where you might really be inspired to window shop to to start plotting a bigger move you know um, got here could, you could gain ideas on where and how you want to live and a new lifestyle change could be in order okay this this might provide you some serious energy 
to make some big changes about lifestyle or how you live. Now there's a new moon, it's an exalted moon happening on the 19th of May in Taurus, Krithika Nakshatra in your 11th house. So this is a really great time to, um, you know, we've got a new moon here, you can wish for something, you can plant a seed. This is your 11th house, so you can wish for it's kind of the big ticket items or the big things that you want. If there's, you know, big money you want or, um, you know, it, it can be a house of hopes, dreams and wishes. Whatever it is that you hope, dream and wish for, you can kind of wish for that. Um, it's also a great area of the zodiac, the 11th house. You can wish for soul tribe connections. You can wish that the universe bring you more like-minded people, people who also have the similar direction of where you want to go in life. You could also wish for a new lifestyle, a new way of being. The best way to do this, of course, is in a, in, in a few moments of meditation, deep stillness. You just really feel the feeling of you having the thing that you want and then letting it all go. So Cancer, I'm wishing you well. We are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, thank you so much for joining. So this is Leo, Ascendant Leo Moon or Leo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now in the first half of the month we have an exalted Sun in Aries. This for you is happening in your ninth house. So this is really strong leadership energy here. This could be a time where people are seeking you out for your counsel or for your opinion. They want to know what you have to say. Um, you might be looked to for your leadership ability at this time. The sun lords the first house. Um, there are no transiting planets through there. So I am seeing some good strong health for you at this time as well. You should have some good energy because the sun is not transiting through your first, but it's exalted in your ninth. Uh, so it is a good strong sun. And since it lords your first, you know, I am seeing there should be some robust health for you here at this time. Uh, Mid-month onwards, we have Mercury moving forward on the 15th of May. Mercury lords your 11th house, and that is where transiting Venus wants you to have more fun with friends. Okay, so definitely, you know, mid-month onwards, a good time to socialize, have fun, go out and about, you know, um, enjoy yourself. Now, Sun in Taurus in your 10th house means you can shine at work, you can be promoted, you can get work if you're looking for work as well at this time. Now, there's a full moon eclipse happening on the 5th of May in Libra, Vishaka, Nakshatra in your third house. So this is where you are standing on a new threshold of energy, and this is in regards to your confidence. So something can be eclipsed out that has been blocking your progress in anything that requires your own self-effort. So if you've been finding it hard to, you know, and one of the ways that this typically can play out is a lot of people will say, and I was one of these people too, uh, for a very long time I was like this, that like I'd always say, oh, I can work really long hours and I can work easily for someone else. But when it comes to me doing my own thing, you know, for a long time, I didn't have the discipline or the um, follow through. And it, I, was, I was always amazed that I could work so hard in jobs and for other people and I can put in a 12 hour day. But yeah, I, I just found it really hard to do that for myself and getting that going was not easy. So um, this kind of eclipse what you've got going on here. If you are looking to set up your own thing, hopefully this eclipse is going to get rid of, you know, anything that's blocking you or anywhere where you are recognizing in yourself that, wow, for others I can work hard, but I can't do it for myself. Something of that nature can really shift at this time. Now, new moon, the moon will be exalted. This is the 19th of May in Taurus, Kritika Nakshatra in your 10th house. So you have the opportunity with this new moon to wish for something. And this energy happening in the 10th house means you, you can wish for next steps in your career that lead you to your dream job. Um, and if it's not a job, then it's some meaningful purpose uh, or meaningful way of connecting with the outside world. 
Okay, but th there's some really great energy here for you, Leo. I'm loving the look of this for you. All right, well, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Virgo Ascendant, Virgo Moon or Virgo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now, in the first half of the month, we have a glorious exalted sun in Aries in your eighth house. So at this time, you might be quite a little bit more psychic than normal, or you're able to see the hidden agenda behind things. When we have sun in the eighth, if you look up a birth chart, I'm trying to think, it's, I'm pretty sure it's Julian Assange, sun in the eighth. I think he's got Venus there as well. But maybe I'll look that up in my editing and just confirm that. But um, the sun lords your 12th house. Look at that. Yeah, amazing. So nothing will slip by your highly attuned consciousness this month. OK, so, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good month uh, for you to be in the know about everything. Now, mid month onwards, we have Mercury moving forward from yeah the 15th of May onwards. So Mercury lords your 10th house and your 10th house is where transiting Venus will help make your output at work more stylish. Isn't that cool? That is a small trivial thing I know but it's good. Look Venus is not thrilled to be in the 10th house okay but she she can be there in the workplace and make your work look more beautiful. So she, she's busy there. She doesn't, she doesn't hate being there. You know, she'd rather be shopping or falling in love, but here in the 10th house, she can at least make your presentation slides look magnificent. Uh, now the sun will be in Taurus in the ninth house. This may mean people are coming to you for your guidance or for your opinion more at this time. Now there's a full moon eclipse happening on the 5th of May in Libra, Vishaka Nakshatra in your second house. So you are standing on the brink of this new threshold of energy, okay? And something's going to be eclipsed out here. Now I see that you're on the brink of new energy to do with you and your family. And this is your family of origin. This is, this is your childhood family. And I've got here the potential here is that old patterns from childhood could drop away at this time. So if there's been something that's been holding you back from childhood, maybe some self-limiting beliefs, maybe something in how you were raised or what your parents drilled into you or whatever it is, this, if there's something like that, this eclipse can just help that to just culminate and you get your aha and it drops away. You don't need it anymore. There's something that, you know, maybe perhaps it triggered you before, it's not going to trigger you now. Okay, so look out for what is it? Where Where is it in my life that I'm just okay? You know, you'll, you'll be amazed. Um, now, there's a new moon happening. It's an exalted moon. This is on the 19th of May in Taurus, Krithika Nakshatra in your ninth house. So this is a new moon where you get to plant a seed. You get to make a wish, right? And you can wish for a guru or a teacher. You can wish for more knowledge or more skills in the field that you love. I really like this um, this new moon for you. This is great because yeah, that I, I'm always excited when I find a new guru or a new teacher or a new book. Um, just today I got a book on my Kindle. It was something about Nadi techniques and I'm like, wow, I'm so excited to read it because it just came on my um, came recommended to me via email or something and yes I'm super excited to get into that so there's something here for you Virgo where you'll be excited to learn something new or you're going to plant a seed for um, perhaps a whole new horizon to open up for you very very exciting all right Virgo well thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome Libra Libra welcome thank you so much for joining I'm just checking the time we're all good all right, Libra, this is Libra, Ascendant, Libra Moon or Libra Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now in the first half of the month, we have an exalted sun in the sky. This is beautiful exalted sun in Aries in the first half of the month in your seventh house. So when you speak this month, especially the first half of the month, you will be this wonderful mixture of both 
empathy and authority. It's really quite incredible. So you've got this exalted sun. You can command, you know, a presence or you can speak with authority. But we've also got sun. This is sun in the seventh house. And this is a sun where you have understanding for the other person. You know, you can see from their point of view. So I think you're going to be a really effective communicator quite possibly for the first half of this month. Now the sun lords your 11th house. So if you're on social media, you might pick up a lot more followers at this time. Now from mid month onwards, we have Mercury moving forward. This is 15th May onwards. We're going to feel that forward momentum again. If things have been still for you or stagnant, you can expect that forward momentum really mid May onwards. Mercury lords your ninth house where transiting Venus may attract new gurus or new exciting people to learn from. Sun in Taurus is in your eighth house. So you might be able to see more of the hidden agendas behind things. There will be aha moments. You'll join the dots. You'll, you'll see what, you know, yeah, you'll see more of, of what's going on. Uh, the full moon eclipse is happening on the 5th of May in Libra, Vishaka Nakshatra in your first house. Oh, this is amazing, Libra. This is all about you. So your eclipse, yeah, here on the 5th of May, the, you're, you're standing on the, on the threshold of a new you. Like this is really big potentially. I've got here, you might leave an old way of being behind and your life could completely change in some way. Wow, that's, that's pretty exciting. And it could completely change in some way. It could be big, it could be small. Sometimes it's the tiny little things that happen in our life and we don't realize it at the time, but that is actually the beginning of the change of our whole life. And I know when Louise Hay talked about it, she talked about um, that someone handed her a flyer and it was something about go to this science of mind church or something like that. I can't remember the details. Don't quote me. But the point is, she talked about that moment later and she said, I didn't realize it at the time, but that was when my whole life changed. And yeah, sometimes we don't recognize the tiny little things that are actually major, major turning points. So what I'm saying is that you are in this phase where things could really massively change, but you may not see it because you're, you're too much in it. Um, and it will take you some years before you look back and go, oh, that was when my whole life changed. So this could be that kind of time, um, especially if you've got, you know, major planets and, and that kind of thing. Um, but, well, if you've got your, your ascendant here, ascendant moon or sun, there you go. So yeah, this, this is you. Uh, you could have other planets too. Now there's a new moon happening. There's an exalted moon on the 19th of May in Taurus, Krithika Nakshatra in your eighth house. So we've got a new moon here. We can wish for something. We can plant a seed. And for you, you can wish for a healing for yourself and or your family members or your extended family. Maybe you want the family to come together. Maybe, maybe you need time apart. I don't know what it is, but there's something you might want to wish for for a time. And, and this, this is a good time to, to wish for, for some healing for you and your family. The camera just got cut. Apologies, Libra. I think we were just wrapping up anyway. I'm wishing you well, Libra. Thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, this is Scorpio Ascendant, Scorpio Moon, or Scorpio Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now, for the first half of this month, Scorpio, we have got an exalted sun in Aries. This is happening in your sixth house. So for you, this is time to shine at work. You can be noticed, you can be promoted, you could win clients. If you're dealing with some kind of legal case, things could really go in your favor at this time. Sun lords your 10th house. So definitely when it comes to work, if you have got good ideas, present them at this time and they should be received well or present them to the world at this time, whatever it is for you. Now, mid-month onwards, we have Mercury moving forward on the 15th of May. Mercury lords your eighth house where transiting Venus wants to be with family. 
You might want to take a short break from work. You might be busy though, and that's the tricky thing. Venus might want to take the time out, but you know it might be hard for you to get that because Sun is going to be in Taurus in your seventh house. So you could be quite busy at work. It's just been in your sixth, hasn't it? Yeah. So yeah, you could be quite busy at work here, but you might really want to take a break. You might be able to take a break as well. Um, sun in Taurus in the seventh house, you will be able to more easily see things from another person's point of view. Okay, so that's really good. You could be quite powerful in your communication, but in a, in a sort of empathetic kind of a way. There's a full moon eclipse happening on the 5th of May in Libra, Vishaka Nakshatra in your 12th house. So you are standing on a new threshold of energy, the new threshold you're about to cross over and, and move into, and this is to do with your spirituality. This is a new threshold of spirituality for you. It's pretty amazing. Your outlook on life and your desires could be changing at this time in a huge way. And one of the things you might find, we've got the 12th house active here, it's like a whole bunch of desires that you used to have. They might not be there anymore. And I've got the note here, it's a great time of surrender. And I'll give you a little example of this. One of the things I have been watching um, is like, so, I used, long time ago, long, long time ago, I used to work in advertising, but every time I'd come home, I would watch something on YouTube that was spiritual or astrology or something like that, because I've had a very materialistic day. So I come home and I watch something spiritual. Now I do spiritual work all day and astrological work all day. And so in the evenings, I might watch like a luxury YouTuber review fancy handbags or something like that. Don't judge me, but that's what I watch sometimes. And anyway, <laughs> what I've seen is that um, there is this trend of quiet luxury. And the reason I bring this up is because you're on this threshold of, and there's so many videos now, all the luxury community is posting all this, I'm not into it anymore. Like people are selling their goods, they don't want it. They're like, and it's fascinating to me how like, materialism is not cool anymore it's you know it's just people don't want and I look the only reason I watch those videos I don't want to buy that stuff I really don't but I like watching people get something and feeling happy I don't know it's just yeah it's just sort of time wasting viewing whatever anyway the point is all these people they're not engaging with that anymore. And one I watched, she was amazing. She, she was having a spiritual experience. She shut down her whole channel. She was just like, I can't even do this work anymore. And she talked about angel numbers and all this stuff. And I'm like, wow, it's happening. I'm like, this is so great. Everyone's becoming really spiritual. It's great. But um, yeah, let's have a look at this. You could be on the brink of some sort of massive surrender where you used to be one kind of person and maybe you were material before, but then your whole life just becomes, yeah, really... Uh, you know, a lot more spiritual than it ever has been. Anyway, sorry about that little detour that I went down. Um, there's new moon happening, exalted new moon here. This is on the 19th of May in Taurus, Krithika Nakshatra in your seventh house. So we've got a new moon here. You can wish for something, you can plant a seed. And because it's your seventh house, you can wish for healing in your love life at this time. Uh, you know, if you are single, you can wish for a partner, you know, you'll be that person of your dreams to come into your life one day, wouldn't that be nice? Um, but yeah, you can plant that seed. And the best way to plant the seed is to, and of course, by the way, if you're married, you can wish for, you know, growth for the two of you or that the two of you become closer or that you get to have an adventure or, or something like that. So when you're wishing for something, best way to do it, just get yourself a few moments, even just five minutes of pure stillness, where you really feel the feeling of having the thing that you want. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Then you let it go and you get productive and busy with your life. Okay. And that thing may come along. So, you know, that's, that's the way to do it. Scorpio, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for taking on my little tangent there you got a longer reading 
the other the other signs will be do you know i had someone write the comment one time they were like oh you you didn't give leo moon enough time <laughs> it was sweet but anyway uh, i try to be consistent doesn't always work all right thank you so much scorpio we are now going to welcome sagittarius sagittarius welcome thank you so much for joining this is sagittarius ascendant sagittarius moon or sagittarius sun as per the sidereal vedic system of astrology now for the first half of the month we have an exalted sun in aries this is happening in your fifth house so this month you might be feeling super creative you might just want to have fun you know uh, with your creativity or have fun with your children it's a time of joy this is a time of, of you having a good time the sun lords your ninth house uh, at this time you might find that people look to you for guidance or advice or for your opinion and then from mid-month onwards we have mercury moving forward on the 15th of may Mercury lords your seventh house where transiting Venus may need some time and space away from partner okay so if that is the case you you might be just feeling like you know you know yeah I love my partner but sometimes I just need to do my own thing that's perfectly fine perfectly understandable with Venus where she's transiting uh, sun in Taurus is in your sixth house and this can bring progress at work can help you win new clients it can help you do well in a legal case as well now, there's a full moon eclipse happening on the 5th of May in Libra Vishaka Nakshatra in your 11th house so you are on the new on a new threshold of being able to take in new responsibilities new responsibilities or new opportunities uh, I've got the note here the universe may well be expanding your ability to take more of life in so that's pretty exciting and that's that's really quite big Sagittarius now there's a new moon happening an exalted moon here on the 19th of May in Taurus Kritika Nakshatra in your sixth house so we have a new moon here you can wish for you know something or plant a seed that that kind of thing and for you you can wish for a healing that will enable you to serve others more or that will enable you to engage more with the world this could also be you could also be wishing for next steps in career to be shown to you that will ultimately lead you to your dream job or whatever it is but really this is a thing of service and how and, and also just how do you fit in in the world uh, so if it's not job related because I know some of you aren't working and you know so we're not all just being career focused so this could be you wishing for more meaning and purpose in life more engagement with the world okay this could be that so Sagittarius I want to thank you so much for stopping by and we are now going to welcome Capricorn Capricorn welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Capricorn ascendant Capricorn Sun or Capricorn moon as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so we have an exalted Sun in our skies in Aries that's for the first half of the month it's happening in your fourth house so there could actually be some pressure at home uh, there could be pressure on relationship with your mother sun lords your eighth house there could be some transition that you're going through at the moment you know there, there could be some transitionary energies or something like that you're, you're in a time of transition here I do think and I have the note here rest when you feel tired yeah so it, it, some of this could be a little bit draining now mid-month onwards we have mercury moving forward on the 15th of may mercury lords your sixth house where transiting venus may want to be alone or she may not want to be with partner so much sun is in taurus in your fifth house so definitely be careful with higher expenses and if you manage other people um, be careful in relationships with them or relationships with your children for example and by be careful I kind of just mean this could be stresses or, or tensions or, or this kind of thing 
Now there's a full moon eclipse happening on the 5th of May in Libra Vishaka Nakshatra in your 10th house. So this is really quite incredible Capricorn. You are on a threshold, of, there's a new threshold of energy here in your life and it's to do with your career. You're standing on a new threshold where it's like, you know, um, this could be the time to reinvent what you do. Or perhaps you are, perhaps something is being eclipsed out and something to do with your work is being eclipsed out that you will no longer need. Uh, and then it's, that is being done because it's going to be replaced with something better. Okay. So there's some form of change. It's, it's, you're on the threshold of new energy. What's in front of you is new and exciting. Okay. And it's because these eclipses, they kind of take you up, you know, as the, as the, as the planets move, it is quite incredible. And especially if you be in the now moment, you do your spiritual work, being in the now moment will help you to do the letting go part, right? You'll be able to let go of the old dynamics. You'll be able to let go of the things that are naturally falling away. And when you do that, you've got the energy to welcome in the new and to, to walk forward into the new. And we've got a new moon. Speaking of new things, new moon. It's an exalted new moon, 19th of May. It's happening in Taurus, Krithika, Nakshatra in your fifth house. This is really beautiful energy. So you can wish for all kinds of new things here. Now we've got a new moon so you can wish for something, you can plant a seed and this is your fifth house. So you can wish for new creative insights, new creative ideas, creative downloads. You can wish to be inspired. You know, it's like, come on, send some amazing artwork through me. Um, you could also wish for a baby if you are looking to become pregnant or any of that. Uh, this could be a really good time to wish for that sort of thing. Capricorn, I do realize that, you know, the energy with the sun there, it could be, it could be a little bit on the challenging side, but please don't worry because there are really good transits coming ahead. And, you know, when we're working with the faster moving planets, as we do in these transit videos, there's always good news that, you know, you just, one month it may not be so great, but then the next couple of months will be amazing and things like that. So don't you worry, there's better energy coming for you this year. So keep posted with the, um, with the astrology. And we are now going to welcome, thank you so much for tuning in Capricorn. And we are now going to welcome, hi Aquarius, my apologies, I think I lost your slide momentarily, but it's back now. So this is Aquarius. Ascendant, Aquarius moon or Aquarius sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now for the first half of the month we have an exalted sun in Aries in your third house. So you're going to be feeling confident this month and it's a great time to win business, to be promoted, to be seen or to get work if you are looking for work. Now the sun lords your seventh house. So you really do have powerful communication skills this month. And if you run any form of social media platforms or any of that, they can really grow at this time. Now mid month onwards, we have Mercury moving forward from the 15th of May onwards. Now Mercury lords your fifth house where transiting Venus is feeling either playful or romantic. I love that energy, that's great. Now Sun is in Taurus in your fourth house, so be careful if you are moving this month um, and definitely take care with mother's health or relationship with mother or this could be to do with how you nurture yourself. Maybe you might need to pay particular attention to that. Maybe you might need to eat better, nourish yourself well, rest if you're tired, but do that for yourself, okay, and, and not be expecting that from anyone else. So, so that would be good to do mid-month onwards, 15th May onwards. Now there is a full moon eclipse happening on the 5th of May in Libra, Vishaka Nakshatra in your ninth house. So you are standing on a new threshold of energy, right? There's this 
new threshold of energy that you are about to emerge into and this is regarding your inner authority and perhaps you've done quite a bit of work of taking your power back from the outside world and perhaps it is time for you to step up and be an authority. Maybe you are going to mentor others or you're going to teach something or it's time now for you to share all the wisdom and knowledge that you have accumulated over a long time. So it's pretty exciting energy this. Yeah, the Aquarians of the world are, I must say, this is this is next couple of years of the Aquarians need to step up and guide and lead and, and do a lot of this, this kind of thing, yeah. Um, now there's a new moon, this is an exalted moon here on the 19th of May in Taurus Kritika Nakshatra in your fourth house. So we've got a new moon here and with a new moon you can wish for something you can plant a seed and this being your fourth house you could wish for a new place to live you could do a bit of window shopping you could you know check out those beautiful nice new build houses in the countryside I may or may not be doing something like that myself but anyway <laughs> um, wish for a new place or to live or a new way of living you know, or like a, a community or something like that. And this is the thing, people are living in new ways. People are, you know, buying a big plot of land and everyone has their small little cabin style house. That's the kind of thing I, I think I'm like in this kind of thing. And you share resources and, you know, because I have often wondered this, like in, you look at a typical suburban street, everybody's got like a lawnmower or something, right? Wouldn't it be great if on one suburban street there was like a shed and everyone could just borrow the tools or whatever it is, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, there, there are better ways of doing things. I know Diana Cooper talked about this. She talked about her vision for 2032 and that there will be, you know, shared resources like gardening equipment and you know musical instruments and things that you know and, and sporting stuff and but it's the community type stuff yes you were in Aquarius this is why we're talking about this because Aquarians are all about community I've got here that this could be a time where you wish for a new way of living maybe you don't want to live the way you've been living maybe you want it to be something completely new and the Aquarians are going to create that the Aquarians are going to be the pioneers who are thinking up ideas for large group type systems you know a lot of us are focused uh, individually in in our small lives kind of thing but it's the Aquarians and the Capricorns that are thinking and the Jupiterians and the Pisceans as well these are the big energy planets and they're thinking about big systems for lots of people and communities and innovating in in, in bigger domains so yeah Aquarius wish big and wish for all of us please <laughs> because you know um, yeah that, that would be good we need to reinvent the way we live there are better ways of doing it all right Aquarius well thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome Pisces Pisces welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Pisces ascendant Pisces moon or Pisces sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology now for the first half of the month we have an exalted sun in Aries that's happening in your second house so the focus for you I do think is going to be financial for the first half of the month you might find that your spending is a little bit higher than usual now the sun lords your sixth house so again you are quite work focused at this time and i think you know possibly at a time of being um, kind of a serious work focus there's responsibility here all that kind of thing now mid-month onwards we have mercury moving forward and that's on the 15th of may so from 15th of may onwards We've got Mercury lording your fourth house where transiting Venus wants to be at home and she wants to cook up delicious food and be cozy at home. Okay, so that's really nice energy there. Now Sun is in Taurus in your third house. 
there's something about you mid-month onwards where you've got more courage perhaps you can be promoted at work perhaps you're going to be seen perhaps you're going to achieve quite a bit of success with your hands-on effort something you put your personal effort into uh, you know that may reap some rewards or be seen or something might happen with that there's a full moon eclipse happening on the 5th of May in Libra, Vishaka Nakshatra in your 8th house. So you're on the brink of a new threshold of energy here. And this new energy is all to do with your independence, but also your interdependence. So it, it's going to be, this might be some modulating of energy required. And this is modulating energy in terms of how independent you are and how interdependent you are. Because, you know, independence is good, but we do need people. You know, we do need community and family and other people in our lives. We can't do everything on our own. So there's going to be something about the energy being modulated or balanced so that you get the, the balance right between how independent you are and how interdependent you are on, on the people around you as well. There's a new moon happening. It's an exalted moon here on the 19th of May in Taurus Kritika Nakshatra in your third house. So this is a new moon where we get to wish for something or we get to plant a seed this is happening in your third house so you get to wish for i do believe the courage to be yourself in all circumstances you could also wish for more friends more appropriate friends to come into your life more soul tribe type people uh, to to be present in your life and of course the best way to wish for anything is just to have a few minutes of stillness silence and in that silence, you feel the vibration of you having that thing, whatever it is, you feel the feel good feelings. And that's you planted, you've planted your seed, you can let it go. And you can be constructive with your life. And you know, don't dig up the seed, just trust, trust that it's going to come in for you. Pisces, and anyone who's watched the whole video, thank you so much for tuning in. It's very late here in London time. I'm just looking at the time. It's well past my bedtime. So I'm going to wrap this video up. I want to thank you so much for being here and I look forward to seeing you next time.